All right, it is time for day six of the Lilith mod. This is actually day six this time. So we finished up our main story of UVHM. We have a pretty nice little melee build going on still, of course, but we are going to lean more into actually using guns here. And then another thing that we do need to test is Phoenix alongside Radiance while we are in Viz, because if we can trigger Phoenix, it does a bunch of extra fire AoE damage. And then Radiance also does its shock AoE damage. So hopefully what I want to have happen is we hit level 61, 62, and we find a legendary class mod that buffs both of these, which that's what I'm going to wait and see if we can do that. So we will do this. I just want to see what our options are. But for today, we're going to go ahead and just do like two DLCs. Probably we're going to start with uh, maybe pirate DLC to get Grindle Quest because I am interested in maybe getting a Phoenix class mod. And then after that, probably do Tina DLC, just to get a Grog unlocked and just to basically do it honestly. So yeah, let's get started. Once again, our melee damage feels really good. The only problems being that we can't really swap weapons really fast, so switching over to our damage weapon is actually a really big choice and is usually excluded to mobs that can't really deal with us and invisibility, so still feels good. Yeah, basically just what I said. Our swap speed and stuff does feel a little bit weird. Alright, the big test of the day. Are my textures fine? Uh, no. Okay. I, yeah, we still don't know what causes it. All I know is we're going to verify my game files after this run is over. So I just, that's just, we're living with it for right now. Fair enough. Alright, and since we're in Pirate DLC, went ahead and killed Grindle there. We're gonna go ahead and try... Well, these have Radiance on them. So maybe these are worth getting? Tormentor class mods? We'll look. We'll look a little bit. Okay, so yeah, we've gone ahead and gone with a Tormentor class mod here because it has status effect chance, grenade damage, and bullet damage, but also it buffs the spark, which gives plus 30% elemental effect chance and damage per level. Pair that with Radiance at plus 6, well, 11 out of 5. Uh, this could be dumb, so I'm going to respec and get both of these and just see what that feels like because of course I am this sounds dumb all right so yep character is respect just basically what I said we would do I was a little bit off apparently it's only plus 50 to both at level 10 which is still pretty good considering the dot we were getting off of radiance is really strong and it'll increase the chance to apply that dot so that should feel fine the class mod also buffs the chance so maybe that should feel good and then we are starting to invest in phoenix now so maybe the tick from phoenix will also feel good we'll kind of have to see we are in haters folly right now so there are a lot of mobs in there i could try to go stand around a bunch of them and just see what that feels like all right so we have a super ba pirate here we are going to go ahead and try to apply slag to him and then just get up close and yeah considering he's a ba and this is taking him that hard that is pretty good that gives me a lot of hope for any not as tanky mobs as a BA would be. So let's go find a pack. Alright, let's go ahead and turn invisible. Get close to some mobs here. Throw out some slag a little bit. Yeah, so whenever it does tick a mob, it does pretty good. Of course, we have to be really close to them for it to actually like take a good effect. But it doesn't... It's not bad. Definitely not bad. Go ahead and turn invis with phoenix active yeah okay and that's not buffed phoenix that is a two out of five on phoenix there and it's still able to put in some pretty decent work yeah i respect that these two should be a good test here so sandman and the big sleep very different enemy health bars so we'll go ahead and tick out sandman hopefully 
Or not. That's fair. We can just do that to him too. And then we can just, of course, stay alive with our melees here. And we still got one enemy worth of cooldown. And our cooldown is pretty much done already. Because that's just how this character is. So, yeah, feels good. Feels really good. Here, really quick, we are going to go ahead and test out our Radiance damage against Loaders. Since they are typically... He still died. Okay, I was going to say, typically they're a little harder to deal with. They're a little more thick. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be not having too much of a problem. As long as we can put slag on them. Okay. Early, we're going to go ahead and slag. Hopefully he'll break my shield without breaking my health bar too late. And, yeah, we can still kill him. This should be fine. Like that. I just thought of something that I kind of hate. Technically, this character kind of has the same leveling route as Krieg might. So... Whenever you don't have any good equipment, the melee is definitely, like, easier to level. But as you get further into the game and get gear, their actual, like, gun and other utility skills become more useful. Which is very cursed to think about it like that. But that's just what my brain is thinking about it like right now. I did not think about the fact that I was going to get a Sandhawk here. Oh, okay. So, yeah. That's a pretty good sand talk. I kind of forgot this was here, and I'm glad we had enough iridium to roll one. So it's flying, it's got a dull grip, it's got... Uh, yeah, basically just that flying dull grip shock. Feels good. Forgot this was here. I'm gonna use it with the mercenary later for raid bossing, probably. So it feels good to have. Also, I forgot about this, but I did want to try to get a little Eevee while we were in pirate DLC. So we might go ahead and try to get that, because that would be really sick to have. So we got the pair, try to be careful not to hit the little sis. Also stay far enough away that Radiance doesn't tick her for damage. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to wait for Phoenix to go ahead and wear off real quick so I don't hurt her. And then, hopefully we should just get to the thing. Yeah, cool. There we go. Doesn't have a blade, which I would have preferred a blade. And it's a doll grip, which also is pretty bad. But it doesn't matter because we're really just using it to trigger its effect. So, neat. We have one now. Alright, so with our little Eevee, let's go ahead and test out our action skill cooldown stuff here a little bit. I don't know if it necessarily works this way. Yeah, because our action skill is still technically active, it won't really give us the extra cooldown from holding it while killing stuff. It was a good idea, though. Like, in my brain, this made sense to try. But, of course, it doesn't probably work that way. Yeah, no, that's not, that's not bad damage. That's not bad at all. Go ahead and break this guy's shield so that Phoenix can do its work. Go ahead and go invis so that Radiance can do its work. We'll throw out some slag because who doesn't want three times more damage on enemies? Yeah, this is just good. This just feels nice. Alright, Bosco. I don't know why I went invis there. I think I was trying to phase lock him for some damage. That's okay. We'll just ride it out. Oh my goodness, he has a normal health bar. This is incredible. I can deal damage. There we go. That was good. And of course, Leviathan. For this, I'm going to go ahead and try to use the flying sandhawk we have. It's going to do flying sandhawk stuff, because of course it is. Yeah, this is not a surprise. There we go. Yeah, not bad. Do a little DLC as always. Uh, we are going to go ahead and try to fight Hyperius. I feel like we're capable enough. 
since we do have a Herald and a Ruby and a Sandhawk and a Bee Shield. And also, we do have a Mercenary Com, which is a green, and it's not great, but it does give us 77% more gun damage and gives us ammo regen. And I'm not really using anything else particularly for weapon damage right now, so it's just going to be the better option. Alright, and from the chest room, we've yeah. got a striker. That's probably it. Yeah. Realistically. And do we have anything down here? A Varuk. Okay, so we've got two items I'll probably end up selling. That's fine. That's pretty much how these chest rooms are. Alright, so Hyperius, I'm pretty much got an idea of how I'm going to deal with him. We're going to go ahead and get all of his bots down. And then after that, I am going to in fact just try to use the pull over here. To just hide on the other side of it and cheese him. That's the entire plan right now. Alright, there we go. Final bot is down. Now we've got a buddy here. So we just pretty much need to get him on one side of this pole. And then I will go ahead and turn invis and get to the other side. Because he just kind of gets confused after a while. And then we'll just hang out. And mainly be friendly. This is very concerning. At any moment he could regain control. I think he's just done though. There we go. Hey! We do have BL2 fix on, so it does make sense that I got a Norfleet here. I will try to refrain from using it because it doesn't actually do anything special with the character. It's literally just a Norfleet. Got a Prasma Cannon, so I'm legally obligated to just kind of do that with it real quick but uh yeah let me check the rest of the loot i guess we've got another definitely better nor fleet here so this one has a bandit grip and exhaust it's got the reload speed it's got a tdr site for more reload speed it's pretty nice uh probably matching grip would be better on these i would imagine probably but i mean this is clearly a usable nor fleet they're all usable Got a Hornet, got two Pyrophobias, got a Shredifier, got a Devastator, another Hornet, Sludges. Yeah, this is a BL2 fix thing. This has nothing to relate to the actual character itself. This is just kind of how it is. And to show everyone that we are staying fair with this, I'm going to sell those. I'm going to go ahead and sell... But we'll keep one of the Hornets, and then... Go ahead and sell that, that, and that. We've got no Norfleets on us. We've got nothing really extra from that kill. It's all in here. The other Norfleet's still on the floor. Over there. There it is. Save quit. And continue. We're not keeping anything. And then I could show Master G's fight. But we all know that I'm just going to go vendor farm for a longbow, zero fuse singularity, or a sticky longbow with as close to zero fuse as possible, and then just use that to gate crush him. So that's not really much of a problem. And if I were to fight him normally, it would just be an SMG Maya fight, essentially, just with invis instead of a phase lock to apply slag. So not going to fight G. All right. And from here, we're going to go ahead and start Tina DLC. Got to check what the class mods do. Got to see what they buff. They're probably still cleric comms with their basic plus to like reload speed or accuracy or crit or whatever. But the actual plus to skills is more or less what I'm interested in here. So we're going to go ahead and check those out. Oh yeah, gonna go ahead and do the chest farm, see what we can get. Hopefully we get these comms pretty fast. It can take a while sometimes, but I just want to see the skills. I'm not probably interested in actually using them, so hopefully it's quick. Oh, hey. So it buffs Radiance, it buffs Hard to Get, and Hit and Run. So let's go ahead and equip this. We already know what Radiance is, we've been using it. 
Hit and run gives us an extra 8 seconds of phase walk duration, 70% melee damage and crits. And then hard to get <laughs> increases. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so stat wise, this should basically equate to an instant phase lock cooldown, but I doubt it does. So let's go ahead and test that because why, you know, just kind of like why at this point. Okay, so it's about 12 seconds instead of 36, so we are bringing our cooldown about to a third of what it normally is, which I could see how 176% phase walk cooldown rate plus the cooldown relic we have on would equate to about that, so I get it. I kind of wish it didn't work like this in this game. I kind of wish that it would basically just mean instant phase walk cooldown. But, like, that makes sense, of course. Also, the name has been changed from Cleric to Sorceress, which I I just appreciate that. I don't necessarily think that's a reference to anything. I played Diablo 2, Sorceress is good in that game. But, yeah, I think it's just a name change for the sake of a name change otherwise. Alright, is this damage going to be worth using, or should I probably use, like, the Herald, I bet? Eh, that looks pretty good. Those damage numbers look big. Are you dying? Oh yeah, he's dying. Okay, cool. Goldie. This should be a chill fight, I would imagine. I'm definitely going to break the magic globe just to go ahead and get that crit spot open and also to like skip some of the dwarf fighting phase that we have to deal with here. Just like that. And there we go. This is not really a surprise. Bee Hawking has always just been insanely strong. Alright, handsome dragon. We're just doing this thing to him. Just a good old spam jump. My, I forgot how strong bee hawking is. I haven't done it in so long. That's so absurd. Okay. Well, there you go. The dragon is gone and hit his jaw on the way down. Cool. So, control core fight time. Should be pretty normal, I would imagine. Go ahead and apparently get a drunk effect to ruin our initial DPS here. And then also take a fire dot to make it worse. And I'm just gonna wait for the bee to come up and be hawk. And there we go. Yep. Not a surprise. Just using really, really meta stuff right now. <gasps> oh! Our class mod. Okay. So this is a thing that I didn't think we were actually gonna get. So it gives a flat 51% gun damage here. It also provides D.Va for the shield capacity and recharge rate. It provides more phase lock health re- or, well, health regen during phase walk. It provides plus to Radiance and Phoenix. Okay, so this could be our comp for this. And then it provides Slayer. So, yeah, this is cool. This is actually a really solid overall class mod here. I was running the Sorceress because the crit and the mag plus having the cooldown felt good. But, honestly, I might just drop it and just run this, because, yeah, that's just really nice. Alright, and during the Sorcerer fight here, I am going to try to pay attention to Phoenix when it comes to saving us ammo. Because I'm wondering if it's, like, inconceivable, if it'll just reduce our ammo cost by one, if it'll actually reduce ammo cost entirely to zero, or exactly what it does. I guess using a... You know, Sandhawk isn't necessarily the best test of this, but it is just a thing that I'm curious about here while we're at it. 
And of course, if I had to guess, I would imagine that this is probably just coded based off of Inconceivable, since that's already in the video game. And so that would just be a really easy translation to do. So that's probably what it is. Alright, first phase done. This is... yeah, we're be-hawking. Mm-hmm. A phase I can't be-hawk against. If only there was some other questionably immoral solution to this problem that we have right now. Hold on, it's, it's actually not stacking. Wait, this is awkward. There we go. And for a final phase, that, yeah, he stood still, so good to go. And of course, we are going to go ahead and try to do Dragon, since we're in this DLC, since we just got our Legendary Calm. I don't necessarily think the Legendary Calm is going to help us with the kill. I mean, the extra shield capacity and recharge rate is going to be great for getting the shield filled really fast. The extra healing while invis is going to feel nice, I guess, but it's usually enough to get us to full anyway. I don't know if Radiance or the fire damage from Phoenix are going to do anything. The ammo chance, like the cost chance is nice. And then the extra crit here, of course, is going to be nice. So, yeah, about 50-50 on this. Half of it is useful. The other half is just kind of going to be there. All right. So, normal dragon operations, we're gonna go green to get some revives, we'll go blue because... Actually, we shouldn't go blue first because that's gonna be our hardest kill. So maybe green and then red. Although, if we shoot blue on accident, it's, it's gonna suck even more, so maybe I should do blue first. Oh, wow. Okay, so if you are invis, they lose aggro and leave the platform early. That's pretty cool. That's actually really useful information. It also means that I should never, ever go invis, pretty much. Is blue down? Or just no one land? Okay. Fair. Hmm. Okay. This might be a comeback later fight. Okay. Quick little stop by, you know, the base game real quick. I need myself a, a, a weapon that actually deals damage here. So, uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, you know, it's a little bit gross to look at. But it's got mag size and a torque grip at the same time. And it's got a sight on it, which is technically what I requested. So, we might just be okay with that, sure. Alright, let's try this again. The main issue is just that, yeah, instantly out the gate... I am getting absolutely barraged with every single damage in the video game. And I think that's a problem with everybody's dragon fight, realistically, is just the fact that they just do that to you, and then you just kind of have to figure out how to deal with it on your character. I do have an evolution that we did pick up along the way. I just was really hoping to try to get some use out of a B-Shield. But at the same time, at this point, like, living would just be the preferred option. So running the evolution might just be the move for this. And another problem I am running into is the fact that I do have these AoEs, and the dragons are running into me and ticking them on themselves. And as such, are just trying to land when it's not their turn, or something like that. Okay. I have gone ahead and respect to try to make this a little more favorable for the fight. So since we are having problems with our AoEs tagging the wrong mobs, I have gone ahead and despect Radiance. 
Instead, I'm going for Resilience here for the Elemental Resistance we should hopefully get from it. I don't know if it's as strong as it says it is on the, well, skill here, but we have that. We do have Phoenix maxed out as well. I took the points out of Phase Strike for right now since we are just using guns. The extra cooldown reduction per kill is still useful for us if we do need to panic out. We need a hit and run for our health regen, Slayer for the crit. And then Diva because shield capacity and recharge rate is really good for the B shield. Inner glow because healing is nice. This because cooldown. And girl power because B shield. So we'll try this one more time really quick before I go ahead and try to call it a day. Because this might work. Got eight. Okay. So, instantly off a of spawn, you know, I'm, I'm dead. But, like, that's okay. Because, you know, this is, uh, this is normal. This is fine. Yeah. No, this is fine. This, this is great. I'm instantly almost dead still. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just safely assume that the extra damage resistance against elemental damage is not perfectly a minus 60 like it says it might be so yeah this might not be a farm today so yeah not for lack of trying we're probably not going to try to fight dragons today maybe a different class mod on a different day will be better a gen 2 com whenever we get that will feel probably nice we'll do more dlc tomorrow and i expect we'll probably hit like level 62 and then the day after that we will do fight for sanctuary and we'll probably have time left over so we'll look for tubby comms after that, I'd imagine. And then we might try to backtrack here, fight dragons again. But as for today, gotta go ahead and call it. The class mods felt nice. It's been nice to look at those. But yeah, that's it. So day six.